Hey everyone, my name is Taps and I've been waiting quite a while to do this video because the Viewers has had a lot of built up anticipation and speculation leading up to it. So I wanted to make sure that there had been enough breadcrumbs dropped before I did a deep dive into it. Looking at the roadmap of catalysts that are soon approaching for Ecomi, the Viewers is no longer far away and it's time we discussed just how big a VV metaverse is going to be. I believe it's going to be what turns many OMI investors and holders not just into O millionaires, but into truly millionaires. As always, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the community and feel free to subscribe. I'm a crypto stock and real estate investor, but never a financial advisor. All right, so many of you may think millionaires off of some fake world that's Pretty pie in the sky dreaming taps, not possible. There are tons out there today who invested in metaverses, other crypto, and other NFTs not long ago with not a lot of money who are now millionaires. And that's in a time where these worlds are still nowhere near mainstream. Today I'll touch on what some of those projects are, but let's go a bit first into metaverses and how substantial this space is going to be really as a whole. First, let's discuss VVverse. So we know it's all coming if you've been in the space for a while. If you're not, then just know that there is some form of metaverse that is coming to the VV and Ecomi world. This is directly on their website where it says coming later this year, the VVverse will offer an immersive metaverse in which fans and collectors can stake their claim in a new and collaborative world of collecting. Now, Ecomi and VV have been very good about not giving us too much up front and leaving us wanting more. But there's a lot of key words here that can help us kind of determine what we're gonna be seeing. For one, it doesn't say just a bigger collecting world or a bigger showroom. It says an immersive metaverse in which fans and collectors can stake their claim. Immersive metaverse is a large term to just throw out there because immediately people are gonna compare it to Decentraland and other metaverses. So an immersive metaverse stands out as a true metaverse experience. And then stake their claim. So that sounds very much just like all the other phrasing of the metaverse worlds when it comes to being able to purchase actual virtual land. In past AMAs, Reese and David have all said that they have a, a vision of what is similar to like a Ready Player One, not where bodies are necessarily going into a game right away, but where we have some kind of wearables and our Batman or our collectibles are going to be the avatar that we'll be able to control inside of a metaverse, which that element of digital collectibles meets metaverse hasn't really been done yet. So there's a lot to look forward to. And they've mentioned before that they're gonna be incorporating a lot of LiDAR tech to make those collectibles you know, run and jump and do actions. And we've already started to get a peek into what is going to happen to the technology, what this advanced world looks like. They just did a take a tour of VV Showroom V2 and they upgraded our showrooms and this looks incredible. It is absolutely beautiful and night and day difference from what we have been used to seeing in our showroom. So. If this is just a peek at the type of quality that we're gonna see long-term, then I believe we'll see a lot more coming in this metaverse. But what is a metaverse really? There's been many articles on it. I mean, the New York Times, Forbes, several have written about just how incredible this is going to be. But I love this Forbes article that says, imagine walking down the street, suddenly you think of a product you need. Immediately next to you, a vending machine appears filled with the product and variations you were thinking of. You stop, pick an item from the vending machine, it's shipped to your house, and then continue on your way. It goes into more examples, but it's talking about the metaverse, an alternate digital reality where people work, play, and socialize. You can call it the metaverse, the mirror world, the AR cloud, the magic verse, the spatial internet, or live mats, but one thing is for certain, it's coming and it's a big deal. That is straight from Forbes. It goes in to say, today the metaverse is a shared virtual space where people are represented by digital avatars. Think Ready Player One. Sounds similar to what Vivi is saying, right? The virtual world constantly grows and evolves based on the decisions and acts of society within it. 
eventually people will be able to enter the metaverse completely virtually or interact with parts of it in their physical space with the help of augmented and mixed reality. It goes even deeper into just how impactful this is gonna be for marketing and communication professionals who need to pay attention to the metaverse because it's the next frontier for online interaction. Just like social media revolutionized the online marketing landscape, so too will the metaverse. So comparative, similar to when MySpace and Facebook really just started out, and there was a lot of naysayers on that space when it first started, but now it is how the most eyes are captured for marketing. It goes on to say that Fortnite, Minecraft, and Animal Crossing are games now, but they already have big user bases, detailed worlds, and user-generated content. So the writing's on the wall that this is coming. And it mentioned all these large games that have really encapsulated a large user base. But the disconnect right now is really between the actual console gaming metaverses and the crypto-based metaverses. NFTs help bridge that gap and companies like Decentraland and Engine and Vivi are going to be at the forefront of mass adoption. Now, how big is this going to be? I'm glad you asked. When we look at this article from Statista, augmented reality and virtual reality market size will ride from 2016 to 2020. It has now been updated to show 2021 through 2024, where we currently sit at $30 billion in market size. It is going to drastically increase. So right now, still very early, but next year it's going to double and then it doubles again in 2023, and then it more than doubles in 2024. From a market size of $30 billion today to almost $300 billion in three years, this is a massive growing space in three years to 10X. What is an alignment most likely with that time frame? Every four years, there's a Bitcoin halving. In almost every four years, or at least within six months of it, that is typically another bull market. But there's another element to this, right? We need to consider the active ability of having wearables, glasses, or some form of technology that is going to help us be truly immersive. And that brings us to the market size for augmented reality on head-mounted displays, smart glass, head-up displays, and handheld devices. And when we look at the actual head-mounted displays and smart glasses, we can see it's not a whole lot yet, right? But it's just going to continue to grow. So I'm thinking short-term in terms of three years, what 2024 looks like in line with the next bull cycle. But look at how massive this space is going to be continuing well after that. So as the market size increases and the demand for these grows and the technology gets better, that price is gonna slowly keep going down. This has happened with solar and big screen TVs and computers, pretty much as the technology gets better and there's more demand for it, the price goes down. So right now, having a really quality wearable that can truly give you an immersive experience is not affordable. A Microsoft HoloLens is incredibly expensive, but in three years, that price is gonna drop down, there's gonna be more competitors, and there's gonna be more development, and that's gonna be perfectly in line with what's happening with Vivi and Ecomi. We just saw a tweet, actually, that just validated this, too. So Crypto Khaki, great guy in the community, said, so my brother attended a wedding yesterday and sent me a pic of his drag girl on the table, top of the caption, yo, what about this, bro? Dragon Girl centerpieces. So I got to thinking and talking, they go into an entire events world, you know, working with augmented reality and glasses. And Ecomi responded and said, as soon as consumer friendly AR glasses are available, the game will change. I agree. And so do most research firms that are showing this is the way that technology is moving. But how much money can really be made with metaverses in crypto? Well, we can see a plot of virtual land sold for five, over $500,000. The NFT frenzy has heightened interest in blockchain-based online environments. The best known are Decentraland, Crypto Voxels, Somnium Space, and The Sandbox. Decentraland has seen more than $50 million in total sales, including land, avatars, usernames, and wearables like virtual outfits. What really stood out is Decentraland has seen more than $50 million in total sales, including total land, avatars, usernames, and wearables like virtual outfits. Now, they just hit 50 million 
in a massive metaverse, right? Vivi just hit 40 million with just digital collectibles. So think about how much opportunity this is going to be when they hop in this space. Crypto is not the first one to do this. They've been very successful in many other games, right? We've seen it in Roblox where kids have set up shops and are making hundreds of thousands of dollars in Minecraft or people are making skins in Fortnite. But Decentraland is really the first look at what we've seen in success for the metaverse world when it comes to crypto. Back in 2018, people were seeing 500% gains and profit from buying and selling digital land back then. But now the price has gone way up. A land parcel in Decentraland is 16 meters by 16 meters in size. One parcel of land in Decentraland sold for approximately 6,900 mana, which at 85 cents, which was in March, equates to approximately $5,800. But if you got in back in 2018, it was around a cent all the way to around nine cents to 24 cents at a high and dropped all the way back down to around nine cents, eight cents for quite some time, was around four cents for years and then just had this massive run up. But they built and built and they had this big peak when they first hit but it was nothing compared to this monster of a year that they had this run. This right here is where Vivi and Ecomi is. And this is a good look at what we can expect come 2024, especially with what is going to be happening with Vivi. And there's a lot more to Vivi and Ecomi than there is to Decentraland, and I'll get into why. When you think of Decentraland, you could say, oh, they're so successful because they probably have tons of users, right? Nope. This article came out in April, so what, three months ago? The beginning of the year, Decentraland averaged about 1,500 daily active users. In March, it hit 10,000. So it was at a high at 10,000 active users a day. Now, Vivi and Ecomi are currently sitting on roughly or between 300 to 400,000 active users. There are weekly drops where people are hopping in the app, actively using it. So there are currently more active users on Vivi than there is Decentraland, a metaverse world. Now, I'm not hating on Decentraland on any fathom. I'm just saying Vivi and Ecomi are in a better spot. They created collectibles that can be avatars and vehicles and showrooms, accessories, and most importantly, they have a ravenous community of over 300,000 users who have built multiple communities on Twitter and Reddit and Telegram and Discord without a metaverse. Wait till there's millions of us. Speaking of the community, I wanna give a shout out to Flight School C. He is the owner of a Comey Apparel and I got this dope shirt. I love the O Millionaire shirt and I will rock it proud. But again, they've almost reverse engineered it where Decentraland and Sandbox, they built out these massive metaverses and now they're trying to appeal to get communities and users and maintain those users to act within their worlds where Ecomi has created a massive user base based on collectibles. Wait until we have a metaverse to interact with each other. It's going to be mayhem. We saw what's been done with the showroom, but I don't necessarily think there's going to be an entirely created world by Vivi and Ecomi because that's a lot to build out and they've already been so focused on all the verticals and all the collectibles and how long they've been working with licensors. So what would make more sense to me is if they had a plug into an already existing metaverse like Decentraland, which we know Ecomi has announced way back when in 2018 that they do have partnerships with Decentraland. But I think they would do something similar to what Atari just did with them, which Atari just recently announced its collaboration with Decentraland and they plan to take a large estate in Decentraland where players will be able to play Atari's most iconic games such as Pong, Breakout, Asteroids, Missile Command, Centipede, and many others where they're setting up a virtual casino in, in a gaming world. Vivi could do this exact same thing, I imagine, where they set up a world but for collectibles and comic books and digital toys and who else knows what else is in store. Probably like, okay, okay, this all sounds awesome, I'm super excited, but how do we make money taps? The same way they're all doing it already in these kind of metaverses. 
and we can see on Decentraland, people are making money and setting up developments with art galleries where owners showcase and sell their digital NFT art, including crypto kitties and other types of NFT collectibles. Vivi already has artist Ali that they're working with, very well-known artists and plenty of art that is coming out as well as our own community are creating their own art that they're selling on OpenSea and other marketplaces. But we even saw the high-end art that came. So it was Givenchy that came out with an amazing, amazing drop. Great to look at and we saw the price. I can't remember how much this went for. I wanna say it was somewhere around you know, $80, $90, but now we can see it in the marketplace for around $600, $700. And that's before you have the ability to display them in an immersive augmented reality world. Next, we can see casinos where players can win Mana in this case, or game sites such as Whack-A-Mole. Well, in an AMA roughly, I think two weeks ago, Reese or David hinted at the fact that we'll be seeing mini games coming eventually to Vivi. And when we look at who the partners are that have been announced on the past with you, we can see Big Red Button Games and Pixion Games. So Big Red Button has a ton of great little fun mini games and actual game games that we can see that are aligned with Sonic and Allegiant Virtual Reality, Tapestry, Monsters, The Path, John Wick, Crash and Burn, Crash Bandicoot would be so cool. And then Pixion Games has a game that is coming soon that has a very much like a little mini game kind of Fall Guys feel to it. Jumping, running, throwing, dodging, collecting. These partnerships I believe will have a big play into what we can see with the game side of our showrooms and what will be the Viviverse. I also noticed that just in April, Sega announced that they're gonna be selling NFTs based on its IPs this summer that was announced. Now, if Sega is hopping in the space, Nintendo's been really quiet, really, for the most part on the NFT side, but you know they have to have stuff in the hopper already. What would make sense is if it was maybe with a company whose head of licensing has known the leadership for decades and has already brought them success with past licenses. <clears throat> Alcon. <clears throat> and finally, music venues where DJs and musicians play music and hold concerts. Now, David just had a response to Claire. Claire is always finding little gems, but there was an entire dialogue going on with David on a Pokemon post actually which one Pokemon, but David went on to say, let me tell you, Vivi is next level. I expect one day all the virtual concerts will be launched on Viviverse. Again, wording is key. And they've said this before around virtual concerts one day being a possibility. But he said, I expect one day all the virtual concerts will be launched on Viviverse. Not I hope or I want to see, I expect. That is big talk, and I believe that they will have the ability to back this talk up. And the last piece to make money is, think about digital advertising, right? Whether it's you and your avatar walking around in a Supreme shirt or some company wants to pay you to create a shirt and wear it around because you're a well-known VV-verse influencer, or maybe they wanna put a billboard or something in your virtual world, let alone the fact that you'll be able to most likely rent out your NFTs, but it all comes down to making sure you stake your claim now before everyone else catches on to it. If you could go back to 2018 and buy land in Decentraland or 2019 and buy land in Sandbox, you know you would, but you just didn't have the chance to, and now the prices have skyrocketed. We're getting that chance now with Vivi and the Vivi-verse. Now I've talked a lot about this, how big the Vivi-verse is, how metaverses are gonna be, but I wanna leave you with a little bit of business know-how, and I'm gonna take it directly from Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. Incredible book, but I wanna focus on chapter seven, which is called How a Tipping Point Tips, the Law of Diffusion of Innovation. We can see innovators are at 2.5%, early adopters 13.5%, early majority is at 34%, so, basically roughly a little over 40%. And we see this is the tipping point where we can see that's the early majority and then at 50%, it goes to late majority and then the laggard, the people who got in late. When we think of VV, I think we're right here. We're not even yet to the early adopter side. And the reason why is because I'm thinking about each of these segments almost in two or three years. So innovators, 2018 to 2021, and then early adopters, 
21 to 2024, and that's where that tipping point is. 24 to 27 is where we're at that halfway. 20 and 30, where the late majority laggers will be. And the reason why is because, think about crypto. Crypto's not even fully mainstream yet, some would argue. And then zoom out. NFTs aren't near mainstream yet. And then zoom out further. Digital collectibles were just really defined this year, thanks to VV and, T and TVK and Quid and other ones, but they're nowhere near mainstream. And then zoom out further. Metaverses still have low user bases and aren't even mainstream yet, especially when it comes to crypto metaverses. AR hasn't come to full fruition yet. This right here is exactly where you wanna be as an investor. How many times have you heard people say, I wish I invested in Apple or Netflix or Amazon or Tesla back in the day? Well, all of those companies were highly doubted and struggled for years before they ever became profitable. And that's what happens when you're in an industry that is so early. It takes time to really shift people's mindsets to where it can catch on to the mainstream majority. And that's where we are now with Ecomi and Vivi. People won't get it right away. So it's our job to help educate so that our friends and family aren't left saying, man, I wish I invested in Omi when it was less than a cent or 20 cents or 50 cents. The Viviverse is coming. And I, for one, plan on staking my claim on as much land as possible so I can be sitting fat and happy on virtual real estate for years to come. If you found this valuable, please hit the like button and leave a comment down below about what you're most excited to see coming in the Viviverse later this year. Also, did I leave anything out? What are your thoughts on the AR space? Please let me know in the comments. It also helps folks see more of my content and so the channel can continue to grow. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell for future content. That's it for today. On Taps, thank you for your time and happy trading.